Morning. I swear a lot. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Disco Elysium. So this one has come highly recommended by pretty much everyone. Everyone I've ever spoken to has recommended Disco Elysium. It was bought for me by Draco. And, uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. Heavily narrative-focused, no combat, complete dialogue RPG with a heavy focus on psychology, philosophy, and comedy, which... It's an interesting combination. Now, I have played a little bit of this before. I played maybe an hour or two with a friend of mine who is also called Lemon, but is not the Lemon from uh, Ruiner. And uh, I know the general idea behind the game. I get what it is. And I've heard, and I, it was, I was fortunate to hear this in the least spoilery way possible, that the way a lot of the game works is that you basically want to entertain every thought you can but you only want to internalize the ones you want to go with, if you know what I mean. And this provides you with the most access to the most things. So that's what I'm going to try and do, but I have no goals or set goals in mind. I don't know the game. Like, I mean, when I played this with my friend, we barely left the first building, right? Like, I did not get far. We did not do much. It was more of an introduction to how the game functions. But I thought we might have some fun exploring this together, so let's have a look. Ah, okay, well, ready we're here. Extremely intelligent, very bad with people, and those interesting facts comes up with original ideas. Intelligence, psyche, physique, and motrix. Okay. Very psychological, a magnetic personality, but unstable. Might begin to lose his mind. Not very smart. Extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. Okay, yeah. Encyclopedia, Inland Empire. Hand-eye coordination. So I happen to know, or remember, I suppose, that Inland Empire kind of represents your character's perception of themselves or their understanding of themselves. I'm going off of memory here and basic understanding, so some of the stuff I'm going to say is going to be objectively wrong. But that's what I remember. I'm going to create my own and see what I can come up with. I'll try and make it true to myself, or at least how I perceive myself to be. So yeah, weak and average on this seems about accurate. I spend a lot of time at my desk. <laughs> Although I got a little bit stronger ever since I started, well, ever since I did that water tank cleaning job, so... I'll, I'll keep it at two, that's reasonable, and three for Motrix, that's reasonable. Do I have any more points, or is this all I've got? I'm not an emotional genius, but I would say I'm pretty in tune with that sort of thing. And of very, very, very average intellect. This seems reasonable, it's probably gonna make for a boring character, but it feels appropriate to who I am. Next. And then we pick these things. Like I said, I'm not going to try and make a good character. I'm not going for specific goals. I'm just trying to make something that feels like it reflects who I am. So we've got logic, wield raw intellectual power, deduce the world. Call upon all your knowledge, produce fascinating trivia, practice the art of persuasion, enjoy rigorous intellectual discourse, play the actor, lie and detect lies, understand creativity, see art in the world, reconstruct crime scenes, make laws of physics work for the law. Hold yourself together, keep your morale up. Hunches and gut feelings, dreams in waking life. So instincts, I guess Inland Empire would be like instincts. Understand others, work your mirror neurons. Intimidate the public, assert yourself. Connect to Station 41, understand cop culture. Charm men and women, play the puppet master. Take the blows, don't let the world kill you. Shrug off the pain, they'll have to hurt you more. Flex powerful muscles, enjoy healthy organs. Go to Party Planet, love and be loved by drugs. <laughs> Raise the hair on your neck, tune into the city. Let the body take control, threaten people. <laughs> so that's like id. Um, ready, aim and fire. See, hear and smell everything, let no detail go unnoticed. The quickest to react, an untouchable man. Sneak under their noses, stun with immense panache. Savoir faire. Master machines, pick locks and pockets. Straighten your back, keep your poker face. It's difficult when trying to base something like this off of yourself because you have to try and not be too flattering, but also not too um, self-deprecating either. Everyone has their own uh, talents, abilities, and preferences. I'd say rhetoric, I enjoy that. Set signature. I get one. Do I get one? Do I only get one? I only get one. Oh, well that's scary. We'll go rhetoric. I do like to wax lyrical. I do like to talk. So, despite my low of an average intellect, well, not low of an average, my precisely average intellect, that could work. I don't know. We'll see. I'll stick with rhetoric. That seems appropriate. All right, let's move on.
The Furies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. R.S. Thomas. I don't know who they are. Well, now's as good a time as any to dive in. Let's begin. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Good to know, my ancient reptilian brain. <laughs> yeah, this is going to get uh, deep and silly in equal measure, isn't it? I don't have to do anything anymore. That's good. I'm kind of tired. Ever. That's good. I am tired. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. Good. I'll just keep doing that then. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. Wait, wait, wait. What's that about the uh, ex something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. The meat thing? This voice acting is fantastic already, by the way. But no, I want to know a little bit more about the X something. X love. X tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of a logic zone. I've never heard that word before in my life. Well, I'm not really one to back down from a challenge, even if that challenge is life. So no, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? Yup, let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? I mean, you know, I guess died and I don't know when to stop. But I learned. Fear and apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. What is out there first? I don't care, I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. I'll figure it out. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. It's the walk of life. You can take it. You're a champion. You know it. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. <laughs> Please, no, I changed my mind. Take me back to the former system body. Nothing. I'm not scared. I am a champion. Straight up. I am a champion. Let's do this. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an un. Godly headache. Oh, fuck that. I can't handle hangovers. Help, cut my head off. It's trying to murder the rest of me. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A call from hell. Yeah, that noise is familiar. Well, let's open our eyes. Oh, wow. We went for it, didn't we? Really went. But yeah, we definitely went for it. For sure. That is, <laughs> that is the pose of a defeated man. Oh boy. It's like looking into a mirror, eh, Chief? Oh boy, I don't even have a face. That's about right. What was I drinking? You can get there, man, it's fine. 
The ma magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Were you going for red wine? Did you trash yourself on red wine? That's a risky game. Is that clothes? Empty cassette case. Okay. Oh, there's not much left of that cassette player from the looks of it. It's pretty screwed. I did turn on detective mode and streamer mode for the purposes of the LP. Because I'm bad at point and clicks and I don't want to have to try and argue with the YouTube copyright system every time I put up a video. It looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Oh, I bet it was a happy song and that's why they did that. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on. Rolling empty. Yeah, yeah. I see a shoe over there. Oh, I can just walk. That's handy. I have one shoe. Green shoe left foot. I have green shoe left foot. I'm gonna just wander outside in my pants. Am I allowed to do that? Can I? You must value privacy. The door has been locked from the inside. I guess the key is probably in my pocket or something of one of my items of clothing that I don't currently have. Hey, my tie is on the, on the fan. Hey, look at that. That's a classy move. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Ceiling fan, you have a fantastically deep bassy voice, it must be said. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? Hmm. You feel as though this creature is your friend <laughs> and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Well, I can't proceed without my friend. Savoir faire. Let's grab the tie. You swoop up ah. and the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. <laughs> the necktie is no longer contained. The necktie has escaped containment. First trumpet starts playing. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. The symbolism is apparent. What if I just pull on the fan? The blades come squeaking to a halt. And the light bulb? A terrible oh. mistake. <laughs> Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Bring it on. I don't care. Your eyes burn with photosensitivity. Oh. It's not good. Oh, I hurt. I literally did damage to myself by doing that. Jesus Christ. Okay. Leave. I have an empty cassette case. I can't do anything with it, I don't think. Well, I have one shoe at a tie. I'm ready to face the world. I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking. I'm thinking I'm all right. There's my trousers. Very good. I can see everything that's in the room. Put on my trousers. There we go. I'm somewhat dignified. Did I do this? Wait, what's this? You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Flare cut pants. Who and why? Fish them out. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Marvelous, so now we can leave. I am going to get dressed first. Seems wise. But what's the deal with this window? I get a bit breezy the in here. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Well, let's put some of that uh, cop experience forensics to use and assess the damage. The shards face outward. Ooh. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I do that with my hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. So I may have broken a window with my fist before, but not this one. So what did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Ah, uh, projectile. Assess the size of the impact. Let's get deep into this. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Was it, perchance, my other shoe? The single green shoe you found <laughs> fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough. If thrown with force. That's how you know true mental anguish has occurred when someone throws their shoe through a window. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Good. Now you only have one. That's all I need. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need anyone. 
The window agrees. Its cracked smile is cold and sparkly. <laughs> I like, I like <laughs> the um, the mental like uh, uh, philosophy, the worldview of spite. Not like spite towards people, but spite towards life itself. <laughs> so I, I threw my shoe out the window. Fuck it, I don't even need my shoe. I'll just get by. It'll be fine. Who cares? I don't need a shoe. I do need a jacket, though. It's a bit chilly. I'm gonna get my jacket. Take the jacket. Looking good, Chief. You're not wearing a shirt underneath that. Um, not a good look to wear a, a suit jacket, a tie, and no shirt. You may want to do something about that. You may. I'm just gonna keep my finger glued to tab, I guess. Welcome to the bathroom. It's fucking depressing. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liquors. Oh, you were mixing your drinks. A man after my own heart. And a shirt. Plus one conceptualization, minus one suggestion. So I'd be more suggestive if I had my... <laughs> if I had my torso exposed. Good to know. But no. You gotta have the full ensemble. Yeah, you gotta be properly dressed. It's the only way. What is... Oh, I mean, let's investigate this first. Uh, see the mirror. The mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. That's quite impressive, actually, unless it was horribly put together, which is possible. Hot water sprays from the base, and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. I've done those before. You bounce back. Let's have a look at ourselves. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. <laughs> Clearly I've not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Maybe I should touch it first. Just touch it. Make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. But, uh, I mean, I feel like there's a self-esteem issue. How bad could it be? Where to even begin? There is a bloatedness. Then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Everything's fine. It's not. Oh. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Well, look, how often do you actually honk your nose? We're a cop, not a clown. So that doesn't matter. And, you know, different size noses for different size faces. It's fine. At least my tongue is okay. It's not. Oh. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. I mean, that's what tongues are anyway. So I'm going to wipe the mirror. Behold. It's me. I've seen worse. I am... Well, I'm not worse, actually. I'll give myself some credit. I'm better than that. But I've seen worse. It's fine. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Of course I do. It's, uh... Is it some kind of superstar? I think it might be a superstar. It appears you're also dead. Oh. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? <laughs> Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? That is a winning smirk, right? That's one you can be proud of. I think it might be because I'm a superstar. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, this is what superstars do. You can't, can you? <laughs> it's like it's not even voluntary You can't anymore. stop. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. It will not come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? <laughs> I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. <laughs> Uh, I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off, too, in a sad has-been kind of way. There is some charm to it. Now, that would be my honest answer. I mean, that would be my honest answer, yeah. There might have been. Ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. So, uh, that's a low chance. That's a very low chance. This is a white check. You may retry it. Let's see if we can discover the source of the expression. 
like the rest of you. It comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. That's about right. Put skill points into encyclopedia to open this white check so we can come back to it later. I'm guessing. Let's take that 3% chance and see what do. It's too late. <laughs> like an image on film. The expression. The expression. Belongs to your primary motor cortex. <laughs> it would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. So you could almost say that this has actually been caused by some form of stroke. Like likely due to the excessive amount of alcohol intake that has forced your character's face into a permanent grin. That's strange. Let's leave the mirror alone for now. We've discovered more and less than we needed to. Very good. Okay, well, you've got a face now. It's not the best one, but it is your face. You should be proud of it. I guess I could sell the empty cassette case at some point. I have a key. I have a key. Uh, glasses would be a good improvement for your face, sir. Anything to just cover up the, the bags. The bags. Oh god, the bags. That door does not open. You know what? I don't even need to Oh, well, no, I've done the mirror. Don't even need to go that way. I still only have one shoe. Does my shoe actually provide any benefits? No. The necktie provides Inland Empire. That provides conceptualization. That provides electrochemistry, but no savoir faire. And that provides esprit de corps. Interesting. Okay, well, I don't really know how much I'm going to need each stat, nor do I know if it matters. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Let's have a little look out. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. Yeah, that's Britain, all right. Okay, well, let's head outside and uh, see if we can go about our day. Yes. Time to face the world with a stiff posture and a concerningly permanent grin. And now I am... The good. Doing well. Hello, ma'am. I should pra- Hello, officer. Hello, I suppose I should practice conversation. It's March, the year is 51. It could be my birthday. If this takes place on the 9th. Possible. Hey, how's it going? I have to stand over here to talk to you. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh-huh. Her eyes are brown, and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. Ah, near enough the same age as me. Officer, am I like military personnel? Uh, no. She seems perplexed by your question. Wow, well, I don't know how to pronounce that. Miss Orangey Disco Dancer. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. I must be a businessman. Wait, I know, I'm a businessman. It's chief executive officer, right? The young woman shakes her head. Slowly. That's a downer. Officer, could be an artistic statement. You're already prone to those. I'm very prone to those. Ah, uh, I see. Officer is my stage name, right? I can see myself as a middling disco artist called The Officer. No, you're a police officer, sir. <laughs> I mean, I personally knew, but man, you guys are in trouble if I'm what passes for a police officer. You're shitting me. I'm not... Unless you've been shitting us all this time. Not impossible. All this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Did that involve or did it include drinking myself to almost literal death? What business is that? Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. <laughs> Try the expression on her. No, no. No, I'm good. Pretty sure my character's like <laughs> probably in his fifties, judging by uh, going by a cursory glance. Uh, nah. Who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the law? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. Bodes well. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. <laughs> Don't let it stand. <laughs> I mean, I could see why. I have the right character. A fondness for contradictory statements. 
No, I threw my shoe out the window and I deduced this from the direction of the shards. Extraordinary. Thank you. She pulls on a cigarette and nods. She doesn't actually think it's all that extraordinary. What do you mean? What do you refer- I don't understand. I think you're crazy. Well, I don't remember being a cop or anything. Could it be because of the drinking? Fuck it. Let's give it a try. The words have already- <laughs> <laughs> so this absolute fucking mess of a human being just you know look at this little picture down here in the left hand corner as the following words are stated right as you read what's on the right make sure you really keep an eye on that I want to, <laughs> I want to have fuck with you <laughs> What was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? No, I don't- <laughs> Say it again. No, I don't want to. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. Oh, fine. I said I want, I want to have fuck with you. I can't even say it without laughing. Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cup are you? Um... Superstar cop, it's been established. Okay, that's cool. Or if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit. It means I'm a bloated old drunk with sideburns and disco pants. If I don't have a joke up my sleeve, it's on me. I have certainly been entertained. Thank you. Whatever you are, you should stick to it. Otherwise... Yeah. It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. Oh. Well, that's going to be awkward. Well. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. Do what? <laughs> okay, well, good. Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. Uh, she must have been eager to uh, uh, just, uh, to, uh, to uh, depart from the conversation. I uh, can't say I blame her. Really. Anyone who says the words, I want to have fuck with you, she's not someone that you should uh, converse with for an extended period of time. Or at all, really. Stepan Kedra, 9 degrees centigrade and a front. I have no idea what those words mean. Oh, good. What's this? There's something on the table. Money! Holy shit, I'm rich! 40 real. Well, more like 40 pence. Low on health, put point into endurance. Okay, well, I don't- I mean, I'm nearly dead, actually, so that's pretty funny. See, the smell of the sea makes you dizzy. Why? Is that my shoe? A gust of briny wind washes over you, because the sea. I'm gonna take my shoe. I now have both my shoes. It has increased my composure, but lowered my savoir-faire. Honestly, on a first playthrough, I would like to just leave the place, like, fully dressed, but I would love to play this game with no shirt, one shoe, a tie, and my jacket, and just have that be me. There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. We're a superstar with snakeskin shoes. We're basically Majima. Our character is basically Majima. I could, you could do a Majima build on this game, I'm sure. Like two baby crocodiles. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. Yeah, when things are bleak, you can at least take pride in a nice piece of clothing. Like shoes. I do it with jackets. I love jackets. I got like a... Really nice faux leather jacket for my birthday, and I love wearing that thing. And I went and saw my friends, and they were like, that's a cool jacket. And I was like, oh, everything I needed in life. It's just for people to tell me I had a cool jacket. Small things. Do they please small minds? Sure. They also please normal minds. And just generally make people happier. So. The door is closed. I'll knock. There is no answer. Well. You hear the shower being turned on. Somewhere inside. I dare say. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. But I mean, that's just the world in general, isn't it? 
Why, 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 why are we having this thought? The door is mute and indifferent. Your despair is a joke to it. What a bastard door. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Knock again? Still no answer. Knock again much harder. Still nothing. Well, that's a bust. Okay, then. Cool. So we looked at a door and got depressed. All right. Uh, it was a pretty good life simulator, isn't it? The weekend edition of the satirical newspaper, Trompe Le Mans. Very good. Well, I think that's everything up here. Let's head downstairs and greet the world. Let's go for it. This certainly is a room. This is definitely a pub? Or hotel? Okay, well, yeah, we're in the video game now. There's a guy over there. There's things over here. Look at these things. This is where the lyrics would be. God, amount of times I've done karaoke in pubs and they were like, nah, just go for it. Remember the lyrics. And I did because I listened to music all the fucking time. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. Ah, oh, someday it'll be me. Is that a bird? That's just a bird. If it were any other game, I'd have thought that was a bug, but no. It's just a bird there. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. Utterly. And it needs to be heard. I agree. For, for once, me and my inland empire are in full, ag full agreement. Through a PA system. Yeah. Something to amplify it by other people. And those people need to hear it. This goes well with the theory I'm developing that I'm a down-on-my-luck superstar person. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Prominent jawline. Yes. Sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. That's a good idea. So what should I sing when I come to it? What, 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 what song should I pick? I mean, if it were real life, I'd go with Shout by Tears for Fears, but, uh... It's a seven minute song and it's also heavily copyrighted. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. I was thinking maybe something happy, get the crowd going. I'm a superstar. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Oh. Sing the sad song. It's profound. Well, when you put it that way. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. That's right. We must find a music shop, store, place. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. So cool. So cool. Where is it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar <laughs> officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstardom hard lately. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Yes. Dick Mullen. Yes. Salam Rocky Bay. Yes. Badass on the edge disco cop. Yes. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. Action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you. And you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's... On. It's on. And it is not shutting off ever. So I need to get a hold of the sad tape. I'm, I'm going to be a sad, profound, but also big dick superstar cop. Yes, this is what I'll be. Some kind of superstar. First, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar. In the groupies and cocaine riddled with hepatitis C, strikes a lion-esque pose with a mic kind of way. You're not Guillaume Le Million or Davy Lewis. No, you're a metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion to a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Well, some would say it doesn't belong. Law enforcement. Internalize. Some kind of superstar. That's me. That's me. Can I strike a pose? Strike the pose. This feels right. You belong here. Damn fucking right I do. You're goddamn right. I'm ready to go. I'm popping off. Hey, buddy. Have you met the newest superstar in town? It's me. I'm gonna look at your stuff first, though. 
The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. Ah, so we're having Monday for lunch. Good. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. Okay, let's talk to you, though. Hello, sir. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. Yep. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Um, excuse me. You're supposed to address the superstar when he comes to the counter? That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he is purposely ignoring you. Looks like he's not a fan. What's wrong? Don't you like the officer? Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Cool, thank you. So not only am I a cop, but I'm also a hero. Yes, you are. A real decorated hero. Fantastic. But what, uh, just remind me, you know, I've done so many heroic deeds in my life. What did I do? What did you not do? First you took the body down. Then you solved the murder. Then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did all those things. No, you see, actually, <laughs> you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. So, what have I been doing then? What, what, <laughs> have you seen what I've been doing? Because I don't even remember. No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. You're always here. I can fucking tell. So, the bird? A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. So, you're into taxidermy? Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. That would do some damage. Something about it makes you feel bitter. I feel like I know the answer to this question, but what happened to the bird? Look, your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors there at where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. I love bomber jackets. Fantastic jackets. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. Okay, cool. Congratulations. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. Oh, you look like a bartender. That period of my life is over. Not everyone who stands behind a counter is a bartender, okay? I'm the cafeteria manager. Well, if you're standing behind the bar and you work at the place in which the bar is situated and you are currently providing service at that bar, for that moment, you are in fact a bartender. You are tending the bar. That is your current role at this exact moment. I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. So you're tending the bar. Where did Sylvie go? She just, you know... Fucked off? There's something there, and it's not good. That's all you know for now. Sounds about right. Okay then, we're making friends already. Good. Superstar cop, off to a great start. Won't go out there yet. Oh, hello. The soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. Kitchen? The door is bolted. A sign reads, kitchen reserved for personnel until one o'clock. Okay. That was a good series of thoughts we had that led fucking nowhere. Sign reads, mess hall reserved for union members. Doors open, four o'clock. I'm going to ignore this person and look at this for the moment. This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Well, now I have to talk to the person. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Oh, you seem nice. The cryptozoologist's wife. Who the fuck is the cryptozoologist? You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. He not towards the man in the orange bomber jacket. I suppose you're right. However, I will look at everything before talking to him, because I need skills and stats. A bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Hello, sir. A man is sleeping at the table wearing mud-caked boots and roll-down overalls. The back of his shirt reels wild pines, encircled by a logo with a tree. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. That sounds useful. Pick up the pills. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. I agree. You've just picked up some magnesium. 
This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen oh. above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. What about heal health damage? I heal health am dying if I don't do that. One more health and I die. Presumably. What if I woke him up? It's a low chance. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. But what if I kicked his stool over? That would probably wake him up, but fine. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. Waiting to meet the superstar, I see. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Ah. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Ah, so he's a cool guy is what you're saying. I'm going to shake his hand. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. His grip is firm. Hello, Kim. You realize he's waiting for your name. You realize he's waiting for your name. What is our name? This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Conceptualize. I mean, I do like just being known as the officer, but... Minus one, partial to the officer. I mean, I am. Yeah, just call me officer. Very well, officer. He's slightly confused. <laughs> it looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? Was I dead drunk during that time? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. Otherwise occupied. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, I just talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? Probably. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? What what, 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 what interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest. And then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Well, I mean, I would, I obviously I know I am the police, yes, I'm aware I'm a policeman. Right. And the interviews? More out of habit than impatience. Uh, I've, I've lined up two, I think. Maybe two? Kim, mate, I've got to be honest with you, I haven't. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that first. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Dead... Uh, 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 well, uh, uh, no. So, the body is still in the tree. Yeah. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. In fairness, I think anyone would prefer if the body was no longer in the tree. But also, it's their body and it's gross, so I don't want to touch it. I'm hungover. Where it has been hanging for seven days. Seven days! We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. How can you be so sure I'm from the police? I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. Oh, so that's what that is. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Good. What is that? Internal affairs. And I'm not them. I'm from criminal investigation. Okay. And these insignias? Yes. But they're just white rectangles. They're not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Ravachol West. Okay. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage. But again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. You're surprisingly laissez-faire about this, but shouldn't I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? It was not on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. Oh. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. 
I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But I can't- but getting the body down should still take precedence. But I can't remember anything. I can see you drank last night and the night before. And that you are still drunk now. Yeah. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. I'm not sure about that. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Anything to heal that one point of damage I've taken because I will die if it gets to zero. A stiff breeze could knock me over right now. What are we supposed to... Okay, well, let's just go. Let's just figure it out. After you, officer. Thank you. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Marvelous. I would like to talk to this man. So, we need to sing karaoke. Very important. Can't put that off again. Report my badge missing. That can wait until after karaoke. Interview cafeteria manager. Do I even have to? And inspect victim's body? Uh, let someone else do it. Okay. Cool. You got more things to say, Katsuragi? Yes. Tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it, because I don't remember anything. Maybe you can tell me what you do know, to help me narrow it down a bit. I literally know nothing, only what you've told me. Do you want me to brief you? Brief, yes. Yes, brief. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling and rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. Christ. No one had come to investigate. They just left it? During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. Oh boy. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. A part of a larger situation. Who is the victim? A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay from Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. But their name, though, they are a person. Who is the caller? To find him or her is one of our tasks here. For now, all we know is that the tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. Why, ident why hide themselves? There is a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The Dock Workers Union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. So who are they? That's us. Oh. The National Citizens Militia. We're the police in this city. Oh, cool. Uh, so our job is to find the killer. That's right. Secret task complete. Ask him to tell you about the case. Would you say this is a mysterious case? No. It's not a particularly mysterious case. I think it is, one that could only be solved by a superstar cop. The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. Okay, so the case probably isn't mysterious, but could it be sexy? There was some interest in this case at my station, but not for the reasons you have in mind. You seem to wish there was a... <laughs> Are you sure that there's not some sex angle we should be considering? Good point. Martinez is famed for its occult sex <laughs> murder rights. We'll get on it immediately. I appreciate your ability to remain completely deadpan, sir. The weary tone is the surest indicator that the lieutenant is being sarcastic. Being sarcastic, aren't you? Extremely. <laughs> it can still be an otherworldly sex mystery in your head, with a dark twist even. A dark twist, you say? He's basically challenging you to sex it up with some lurid twist. Don't get right into it. Sit on it a bit, then hit him with it. You're right, I need to channel all of my writing skills, which I don't have, and come up with... the conspiracy. So if we're from different precincts, moving strictly along, why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a... A pissing competition. He considered the phrasing before speaking. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. So what do you mean? You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. You know what I'm in on. Retrograde amnesia. Better still than an imbecilic cop-off. Cop-off? 
It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Okay, well, that is a priority, admittedly. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? That'll do for Good. now. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a white check, you may retry it. Convince Kim there's a sexy dark mystery twist in the case. Only banal Aww. things strike you. At the core, you're a very banal person. With a very small soul. We'll come back to that. One you should be Aww. ashamed of. It's no wonder the soft one doesn't want it back. It was right to abandon me. Well, that's a bit harsh. Okay, fine. You should know that I can't remember anything. No response. He just arches his brow. Appropriate. He's having trouble processing it. Believing it even. I feel like I must repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? That might be a good idea, to be fair. There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. But I'm completely lacking in basic information about even this organization we're in. Can you help me? Fine. We should get through this day first. Off hours begin at 9 p.m. If you're still having trouble then, I can give you an orientation. That would be helpful, thank you. So what's wrong with personal affairs? Not a fan. It's just the nature of lieutenancy. That's fair. The RCM deploys a self-styled structure called the Decomtage as its chain of command. Every lieutenant is responsible for two sergeants and eight officers. That means the average lieutenant has to deal with quite a few personal affairs. Even you know this. So what should I concentrate on? Try work. The case at hand. It can work miracles. I mean, I do that in real life, I suppose. I'm afraid this is a medical situation. Really? You look fine to me. <laughs> I'm talking serious, unbelievable damage here. I saw myself in the mirror and had no idea who I was. This psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. It's not psychological. Some sort of major brain damage has occurred on an unprecedented scale. Then you should consider seeking medical attention. You can use the radio in my kinema to call your station's Lazarus. Was there anything else you wanted? Lazarus? Talk about him, I suppose. Me? Yeah, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. You will walk back better to get more rapport. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? You're wearing glasses. That's correct. Good. Okay, we've established that. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. But you can't quite muster enough testosterone. We're not. <laughs> it would take a legendary amount of testosterone and physical insulin to take the piss out of Kim for wearing glasses. Okay. I don't actually. Glasses are cool. I'm wearing glasses now. They're not prescription, but they are glasses. Are they? They're mostly just cumbersome. I don't know. I think glasses are a good look. You could use a good, normal peer yourself. Probably, yes. You don't look like other people around here. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. S what is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I want to hear more about Seoul. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Revachelier. He seems almost proud of these things. I mean, you know, he was born here, he's lived here, he speaks all this language, so he is basically a person of here. He is a person of here, that's it, end of story, really. Tell me a secret. I want to know a secret. No. Please? Oh, okay. The lieutenant nods. <laughs> okay, right. Do you ever talk about yourself? What do you mean? With yourself. Oh. You know, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with, like, your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. Good start. 
The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. He must be lacking in this department. He must be. The lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. Okay. But this isn't an old school case. I get it. You're one of those old school detectives. So what? That makes you the new school? God spare us. You'll see. I'm a superstar cop. For real detective work, nothing beats a good notebook by your side. Yeah, but where's the panache? The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's probably quite helpful, though. That's where his conversations with himself take place. Ah, clever. We all have our different mediums. His is written. So we must steal the notebook. Good. Let's change the subject. Okay, well, I think we're about done here. Let's move on. I've noticed that time has been moving on, so we should probably... First of all, let's talk to you. You're suspicious. Hello, sweetie. Oh, well, I mean, I can't, st I can't stay suspicious. She turns to you with a smile. Wait, who's sweetie? Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Hmm. Maybe I am. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? I don't really want to talk about that right now. I had once. <laughs> wink twice. But then I lost her. Wink twice. What was with that fucking wink? <laughs> Stop winking. Tap yourself on the side of the head to correct the malfunction. Do nothing. The neurological damage is probably permanent. I'm going to tap myself. I see you are still grieving. Well, I won't pry. She smiles gently, paying no heed to the inexplicable winking. What a nice lady. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. She slaps herself on the forehead. Forehead? I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Tea is great. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. The Motley crew? Wacky? My esprit de corps needs to calm down. You seem to be in the chair. Yes, dear. I'm a paraplegic. You have to understand, I'm a very stupid man. I personally know what a paraplegic is, but I don't know if my character does. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height, or a grenade explosion. A grenade? Did you fight in a war? No, dear. I'm not quite that old. Although, I was injured in the line of duty. Were you... See, if she's a cryptozoologist's wife. Were you a mountaineer? Nothing so glamorous, dear. Though, when I was young, I dreamt of planting the Revisholian flag on some figurative peak. That does sound fun. Well, what did you do then? I was a training and development manager at a rapidly expanding mail-order shoe company. Did you make my shoes? You'd think it would be a safe job, but I had to be everywhere and, well, once I happened to be under some faulty scaffolding. That's rough. I was lucky. This was almost 20 years ago, and I was compensated exceptionally well. One can only dream of such payoffs nowadays. She runs her hands over the chrome wheels of her chair. I'm sorry, it was rude of me to mention a wheelchair. Let's move on. That's quite all right. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. Well, better to have a respectful conversation, I suppose. I don't know how well my character conducted himself in that, but I tried to lean him in the right direction. There is no bitterness in her voice. She accepted the curiosity her condition inspires a long time ago. What a... all-round solid person this is. How would you like to roll with me? Whatever do you mean? <laughs> I was thinking of the lyrics to a song. I want you to be my wheelchair partner in fighting crime, reading backyards of corpses, catching sequence killers. Yes. The superstar cop needs a sidekick, other than Kim, because he's the one who actually does all the work. Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. He's not my partner. He literally does all the work. I need a partner in looking f f glamorous and striking poses. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. <laughs> I know, I know, but there are also side mysteries, sequence killers, and forays into the paranatural. I can assure you with absolute certainty 
There are no sequence killings taking place in Martinez. Kim, if you say that with such confidence, there will end up being sequence killings taking place in Martinez. Now, gentlemen, no need to squabble. I wouldn't be of much use to you anyway, sweetie. But three heads are better than two. Thank you, but... Martinez isn't the most wheelchair accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. But your brain would speed us up, and I'm sure you've learned how to strike poses. Perhaps another time. Oh, fine. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing, or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. I drank so hard, I forgot literally everything. Oh my. <laughs> you know where we are, right? The Whirling Rag in Rags Cafeteria was on my keys? That's right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? See, I have no idea. We're in the city of Revishol, dear. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Revishol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Revishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I doubt that somehow. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? It's a bad year in my late 40s or 50s. I don't even know how old I am. There, there. The year is 51 and spring has only just started. I'm sure there are better days ahead. Appreciate your optimism. She looks flustered, her hands smoothing out the creases in her blanket, even as she attempts to reassure you. Huh. The lieutenant studies you, rubbing his chin. <laughs> I'm beginning to suspect that you might indeed be completely adrift in this reality, thinks the lieutenant. <laughs> How can it be that bad? Never mind. We're in this now. Just got a deal. I can tell that oh this my God. is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Uh, some kind of democracy? I'd like to think it's the dictatorship of the proletariat, but something tells me it's not. Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plains on steeds, civilization cowards before us. We are governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Radios are being used to control people's minds and distort our, our perception of reality, concealing our true masters, foreigners, and women. What? What? Radios control people's minds to sort of perception of reality, concealing our true masters, foreigners and women. Oh. Oh, okay. It took me a moment to actually comprehend what that even meant. Um, yes. Oh, no. Oh. Nothing like that, dear. Revishal is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own and certainly not one who's horseback. Why not? And if there's no government, why are there cops? Oh dear, this is troubling. You really ought to know that, being one yourself. That's why I asked. There aren't any cops in Revishol, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. The revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. <laughs> Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. <laughs> She's scared now. Poor lady. So how did I do? You didn't do too well, dear. <laughs> it does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality, in a word. It's very odd. I bet. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. <laughs> but maybe a... Fresh set of eyes is what the world needs, and while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. We'll see. So what's the revolution? A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. What does that have to do with there being no cops? It has something to do with everything. Yeah. I really don't know how to explain it better. 
interesting. I'm just a poor woman, she thinks. What do I know of these things? And how can I help you? Surprisingly emotionally intelligent for an absolute wreck. So who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. <laughs> Maybe you should ask. She turns to the lieutenant. No, <laughs> I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. That's fair. It's not your job. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. All I need to do is find the first homeless person I see and ask them everything, and I'll find out everything I need to know. I gotta get going. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. Thanks, I'm gonna need it. Good lord. Uh, yeah, I got sidetracked ever so slightly. Uh, a little bit. Uh, let's go talk to S Bird Stuff Boy. Hey, Bird Stuff Boy. The man with the unimpressive beard <laughs> notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Who did it? Who killed him? Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. He glances into his little notebook. Yes. Okay, he responds tersely. <laughs> I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41... He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. The Harbinger of Ruin. What? Nothing. I just wanted to see what happens if I say that. Now I do. What is this? A joke to you? Is this what you get when you call the police now? This guy? We've been waiting for a week here. Yeah. And? Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. We're playing good cop and wacky cop. Yes, of course. He takes a step back. For a moment, the cafeteria manager fidgets under the lieutenant's gaze. Then he gives in. Good. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. Yeah. It was you who placed the call, correct? Yeah. No, I only just got here. Oh. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Okay. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. Ah, he looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. Oh, I live in Jamrock. I sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. You manage three. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. No one cares. I didn't imply that. Detective. Who, me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have everything. You? Oh, questions. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? The man is clearly agitated again. So where is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. He points to the kitchen behind him. And how do we get there, then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. Really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. There are people on horses. I knew it. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. Well, he's failing. So who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? <laughs> of course I didn't kill him. I don't know. You sound pretty guilty. Why did Sylvie go away? Is it because you killed him? She went away because none of your business. I'm afraid it is, actually. I'm the police. Have they not been telling you you're a cop? This is the second time you've avoided the subject. Oh my god. God, what is your obsession with this Sylvie person? Get over it. I'm a cop. Maybe it's he who's obsessed with this Sylvie person. Certainly sounds like Certainly it. seems so, that's all. Let's go. I interviewed him. I got 30 experience. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. How about point four zero real? Would that cover it? No one is saying the multi-pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. Imagination. But. But. 
Let's bail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility! You don't like those! Slip away unnoticed. <laughs> don't tell me that was successful. As you blow this joint, <laughs> behind you, a <laughs> voice shouts. <laughs> we blew this joint! Real mature, man. Real mature. Yeah, kiss my ass. I'm a superstar cop. Some kind of superstar. Oh, I completed the thought. Wow. Wow, we just got there. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. Well, I don't want to do that. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die. Yeah. In a cool voice. Yeah. You people have no idea how good these cops are going to get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. 20. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists or prime ministers or prophets. And you're the first one. The first and the best. Bonuses. Minus one logic. Price of self-delusion. Learning cap for visual calculus. Suggestion. Electrochemistry and composure. Raised to six. Except. Bingo. I am some kind of superstar. So what? Am I? Have I just locked it in now? I haven't got it to max experience points yet. And I, I don't suppose I have any others, do I? I don't think I do. I, well, I'm now a superstar. Uh, good. Wow, that was easy. Cool, I did it. Uh, this game's easy. So, inspect victim's body. Yeah, still got report badge. Sing karaoke. The pissing competition. Once we've inspected the body, I th yeah, he said we can we can talk about that after inspecting the body, and then at like nine o'clock he was going to give me a debrief. Join him on the whirling in rags balcony after ten o'clock. So he called the Lazarus. We need a reality lowdown. Find someone to tell us what's going on, and find out who made the call. We should call Sylvie to do that. I need to find a way to sort out my halogen watermarks on my jacket to figure stuff out. I found my other shoe, I interviewed the manager, and I asked Kim stuff. Okay, so I've got a lot done, really, to be honest. I've basically cracked the case. Hey, buddy, how's it- Hello? That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Pretty long, it's drink o'clock. boy. It's coming back to him. You had your mesolimbic reward pathway worried there. Not thinking about drinking all that time. It was like you weren't yourself. Now that you mention it, I do need a rum and lemonade. I'd love for God to serve me up a beverage. Forget about the bar. Or don't forget about it. You should totally try to get a <laughs> drink there too. But first, you should lick that stain off the counter. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's get wild. Lick it. I'm gonna lick it. Calmly. The lieutenant looks to the <laughs> then to you, licking the tasty rum stain off the counter, then out of the window again. Oh boy. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm investigating. We should move. <laughs> you could definitely go for some more. The titillating scent of alcohol in your nostrils was beautiful. Good to know. We'll have to find some booze sometime. He did an autosave. The worker is in a deep slumber. Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from. Into the primordial darkness. The darkness? Who is this? No idea. Looks like he works for Wild Pines, the logistics company who owns and operates the harbor. But why is he sleeping during the day? Possibly because there's a strike going on in the harbor. There's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. Ruckus talking to Gar, so that does make it easier, but... Let's give it a go. The worker continues to nap, undisturbed despite you shaking him. This guy is a real juggernaut of sleep. For real? So I need to put more points into physical instrument in order to try again. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. I have done nothing. Truly. Hey, Gar, how's it going? Could you serve me up a beverage? Fuck, I keep doing- Okay, look, I need to change the controls. Okay, I can't change the controls. Fucking brilliant. Well, I'm not going to be running much then, because I need to press tab to 
bring up the inspecto vision and I need to press shift in order to sprint, which means I keep bringing up the steam overlay, which is not ideal. What is this? Nosafet health. Yes. Ah, oh, that's better. Let's do that too. All right, we're good to go. We're ready to solve a mystery. Hey, buddy. Real mature man. What exactly were you trying to accomplish? <laughs> you do understand you still owe me money, right? He crosses his arms. Damn, your feet thought we got away. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. You demonstrated some serious skills there. Slipping away Sambo style. It was really good. By the way, Sambo or Samaran boxing is an eloquently violent set of one-on-one -on -one fighting moves originating from the Samaran Isola. Sambo used to incorporate a wide array of martial disciplines from archery to mounted combat, but mainly means aesthetically pleasing single combat nowadays. Sambo style implies stealth, cleverness, and cool. Sambo is awesome. You must have appreciated my Sambo style stealth. Oh well, if that was Sambo style, then let me wipe that debt. <laughs> he snorts sarcastically, then suddenly changes tone, probably realizing it was pretty cool. So how much do I get paid as a cop? Surely the wage is <laughs> decent? I don't know. Okay, the stupid drinks are on the house, Mr. Athlete. Thank you. I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window. That's a hundred square. <laughs> that window is just an unfortunate casualty of me practicing my moves, so I won't pay for it. <laughs> Fine, I'll take it off the bell. Sleep in a post-apocalyptic hellhole if you want to. <laughs> just know I won't give you another room. <laughs> so we're cool. Not entirely cool. You still owe me 60 real for three nights stay. If you don't have it by tonight, I can't let you back up there. As if you can stop me with my Sambo style. Now what the hell did you want? I assume you wanted something to come back here. Can you pour me a drink? Do I have a shaker in my hand? Is this... is this a shaker? I suggest you go find one. He sounds irritated. You sound irritated. Why? All I want is a drink. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow tie and doing this? Well, you are a wanker. Am I smiling? <laughs> Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm not a bartender. I'm a cafeteria manager. Is there anything else you wanted? You're tending the bar. Play it calm. This man needs to understand you need a drink to help the community deal with police stuff. <laughs> I want a fucking drink, asshole. <laughs> I'm an alcohol operated detective. If you want me to clean up the dead body and solve the case, then you need to insert alcohol into my mouth. Oh, well, in that case, let me pour you a nice, big, refreshing marinella. Do you want that out of a glass or a pineapple? A pineapple, because it'd be more difficult. Don't be an imbecile. I'm not going to serve you a marinella. <laughs> I have work to do and broken things to fix. If that was all, I'd like to return to it. No, I've seen something here at the whirling gar. A thing I need to talk about. What thing? Gar, I saw a sign saying that I couldn't go into the kitchen. Why can't I go into the kitchen? What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. I have a search warrant. No, you don't. You better believe it, fucker. Fucker? <laughs> Lay off the swear words. They don't make you cool. This isn't kindergarten. Excuse me, my swear words do make me cool. Fuck off. Besides, the RCM doesn't do search warrants. I know the law. You'll just have to wait for the kitchen to open. If you have to get in there, which you don't. Why the fuck do you know the law? You do realize you can just go into the kitchen at 1300 hours. No need for superstar charm or Sambo style antics here. There are always, there's always a need for superstar charm and Sambo antics. All right, I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the union. Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. Why are you swearing? It doesn't make you cool. He hates the union, but grudgingly recognizes <laughs> its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. 
retaliate. Yes, it's a shame you got to suck up to the union to stay afloat. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers, and it doesn't matter. I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, you called me out. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. That's good. The lieutenant gives you a meaningful nod. How do we find them? We don't. Oh. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. It's like else I wish to bother you about. What? <laughs> By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Thank you, video game. That's a useful thing to say. I saw another thing. By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. What do you mean? You wait and see, cafeteria manager. Yeah. Absolutely in the question. First, we find a sad banger. Banger. Then we sing this place to shit. They'll, they'll fucking burn it down with how sad it'll be. Goodbye. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Do I even have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. S south, maybe? You don't really know, do you? I have only a vague blackened image. A vague blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. I would. I'll live in a dumpster. I don't care. Fuck everything, hobo cop. Entertain the thought when you get the time. Maybe being a hobo and a cop has its advantages. Maybe. Now, I am a superstar cop, and a superstar cop probably shouldn't also be a hobo cop. So, uh, I don't think I want to internalize hobo cop. No, I will not be a hobo cop. But we now have that. Then again, I could just internalize it and see what happens. Fuck it. Do what I want. I'm a cop. Superstar cop. I don't need a house. Why would I need a house? Can't go through there. Things are already difficult. Game is too hard. I've decided to quit. Let's go outside. Go now. Go go outside, dumbass. Summer door closed for the winter. What you? But what? But what? Uh, it's winter. But it's spring. How do I leave this fucking dive? I go this way. Okay. Need to do something behind his back. Do it when he's sleeping. I think that said. I don't know. My load times are too quick. Humble brag. Hello, sir. Or ma'am. I don't know. Hello. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? What young woman looks up with surprise. It looks up at you. You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here. That's all. Yeah, considering what we're like, that doesn't surprise me. I have questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? Who are you? Me? I am just a gardener. Cool. And what are you doing here? I am working. Working on what? I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. Oh yeah, you've really been doing it. I can see by the way you're doing it right now. There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. What? Well, as you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. That's understandable. I once painted someone's shed, but they had like almost as many dogs as I do. And uh, they kept all of their dog poop in a wheelbarrow next to the shed. I had to take some breaks and chain smoke to cover up the smell. It was awful. <laughs> it was really bad. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. We'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. She smiles politely. Of course. Where to? Where is it exactly? The corpse? It's there. In the yard, right through the hole in the fence. Where am I? What do you mean? I'm disoriented. I don't know where I am. Yes, sir. District of Martinez. She looks around. This intersection is called Roundabout North. She looks around, thinking what else to say. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. 
The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. I'm just being sincere. What is in the north? But they're hard to reach. Thank you, that's all for now. No problem. She nods, brushing a fleck of soil off her cheek. I gotta go. Of course. I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with a canary yellow glove. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after. Uh, can I borrow your gloves? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. Oh, what a wonderful lady. Thank you. Can I equip the gloves? Plus one interfacing. Bye bye, bugs. I have. Yes, good. These will keep me safe from everything. A car. Is this your car, Kim? It's a nice car. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. She's a beaut. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. Oh, open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Kim, what are we looking at? What is this machine? This is the Cupris Kinema, my motor carriage. <laughs> you can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. He nods at the cabin, so you just let me open the door to your carriage. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool motor carriages? The Cupris motor car does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. Where's mine? But this is different. This is a sports model. I might be wrong, but this one is a sports model, right? My gloves saved me. You're right. I didn't take you for a motor car enthusiast. Do you also like Tip Top, Detective? A vainglorious smile spreads over his face as he pats his machine. What's Tip Top? An interisolary racing series. You should definitely give it a go if you like motor carriages. It has fantastic competition. He smiles again. So our boy is into motorsport. Good to know. I personally am not, really, but I still think it's cool. What is this sinking feeling I have with the words motor carriage? Nothing. Nothing. It's probably nothing. Forget I brought it up. <laughs> Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. Yes, sir. This must be what woke me up when you arrived in Martinet, the infernal noise. Yes, sorry about that. The Coupris Kinema does have a rather distinctive engine sound. Very distinctive. He says it with very badly concealed pride. Haha. <laughs> Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? Boring. Look around the cabin again. Oh, pick up the radio. The frequency tabler lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. Ooh. And then you hear something. <gasps> a voice? The soft purr of electrical kittens. Kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. What a magical device. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Hello, Alice. Huh. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Come in Delta 10, this is Firewalker copy. This is Officer Alice Demetri, precinct 57. How may I assist you? You could swear she was friendlier with the lieutenant. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. <laughs> Ignore her. <laughs> Um, could you connect me to the 41st? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is rather oddly familiar. 10 2, 10 5. This is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. Oh, ha, ha. It's good to see you, man. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Hi, this is me here. I work at your station. Then for what's your status? Over. My status? Uh. 1018, 1020, over. 
Please just talk human to me. These numbers mean nothing. Take your message, sir. Over. <laughs> Thank you. I need to report my badge missing. 10-9, repeat message. Over. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10 four, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Okay. Is it him? <laughs> what does he want? <laughs> is it him? Ah. Oh. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? I'm just gonna stay. Um, for now, I will abstain. Who lost his badge? Oh no. Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? Is my name Dick Mullen? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says, fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. Oh. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. You don't know that. It could be written in a future book. Defend yourself. Immediately. They laugh at you. Ha ha. Officer has lost his badge. Ha ha. Like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. <laughs> Thank you, Jules. Oh, God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Deal. Cope. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Somehow that hit harder. Mullen dicked us. Do I tell him to stop? This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Yeah. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Yeah, I did. Satellite officer Vikmar conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Well, top banter. Okay, can we move on? 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Thank you. Fuck me. Mac, come here. You've got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. Why can't you call me by my name so I know what my name is? What's going on? Oh, God. Supercop here lost his badge. Celebrity Supercop, thank you. He lost his what now? Come on. His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Did you all please just stop saying that over and over? He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. <laughs> Why? Did he find it? <laughs> the room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Person was wondering if you found your badge yet. Uh. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. Okay, I got other things to talk about. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animator's conversation in the back's making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Suck a dick. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Oh no. I don't have a gun. Sergeant Person wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Over. Oh no. Check your pockets. Check your. Holy fuck. <laughs> you don't know where it is, do you? Oh no! I don't have my gun! No. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. Oh no. Don't sweat it, Bratan! You don't need a gun to have fun. Uh, we can still have fun. It's not all over. You don't understand horrific necktie. If the gun's not on me, then someone else might have it. <laughs> and that's a serious problem. 10-9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Uh, I didn't lose it. I've put it in the bank. <gasps> over the phone. It's easy. Just say it like it's the truth. And then it becomes it. Ah, oh, my gun's in the bank. Uh, it's in my other pair of chinos. Yeah, I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. <laughs> that would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Yeah. Oh, I can do this mid-conversation. Okay, well, I should pick another skill point then. Well, we have a means by which to have physical instrument be a thing, so let's try that. We can give that another go. Okay, it doesn't help me in this conversation, though. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can have some gangbanger running around with it. Oh my god. We were glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You mm. need further assistance. Over. 
I am in dire need of financial assistance. Then for I hear you. I don't have the authority to answer your request, but... But? What does he want now? Uh... He's asking for money. Can I have money? Is he fucking kidding? You didn't say no. I don't think he is. No. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. I'll drink some of it. Right. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. It is paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. He says it's important to the case. Mm -hmm. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. That's fine. We don't use cent. We use, um, what is it? Real? Request denied, sir. Over. Oh, come on, man. I don't even have a place to sleep. He says he's in trouble. Doesn't have a place to sleep. Yeah. Well, I guess he'd better crack the case before sundown then. Oh, God. I've already wasted two hours fucking around. Vigmar uh, said... Enough, officer. This begging is below your dignity. Ah, uh, fine. No funds. Anything else, sir? Over. This might sound odd, but this personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay. 10 four, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Thank you. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. He's not there alone. 10 sir. I'm not hearing your question. Are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10-12 here. Over. I wanted to know if you got my badge description right in your report. Could you read it to me? Name, rank, day of birth. What? What is it? He's still on the line? Yes. He wants to verify the information on his badge. I mean, that's a reasonable thing. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachoian Cavalry Force. I'd buy it. Yep, that's my name now. Tell him to stop wasting time. Just tell me. What do you need, sir? Over. Any news about my family? Ten, uh, <laughs> excuse me, sir. Over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. I just thought you might have heard of them, that's all. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. Please refer to me with my full name in the future? Ten, nine, repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Over. Please just say my name, Jules. Uh, what? What is uh, it? What can he possibly still want from us? The fucking peanut gallery. He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. I'm not drunk yet. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. I'm going to get emotionally aggressive on you in a minute and then physically aggressive. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. All right, let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. All right, that's all for now. Roger that. Ten, ten. Over and out. The static ends with a loud click, then everything is silent in the cabin. 18 kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier, around a dozen cops. Fantastic. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke. A buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. Okay. What is going on here? Did something happen? She asks, startled. Jean Vicmer turns to her and says, What happened is my partner made contact and it's not good. He's lost his badge. He seemed confused, delirious even. He stops to reflect. You're, I'm your partner. Mac, the torso Torson is finger-fucking his fist, <laughs> laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Okay. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, Max right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Uh, all right, hang on a minute. Enough. None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. Oh. He's a cop. He's one of us. God damn this. Oh. We must help him. 
Mino looks down at her neatly polished black shoes. There is a quiet firmness to her voice when she speaks. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on carrot juice? He's a lost man. I'm a superstar. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out unnoticed. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. He gestures Torsen to block the doorway, then turns to Minot. Those were he sighs heavily and turns to address the room. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. Oh god. I guess I can hold over the report for a few days. Old boy lights another cigarette. Thank you, Jules. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Oh. Well, I need to do more radio talk. I do. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, I would like to speak to the Lazarus. This seems like a good means by which to pull myself together. It will take just a moment, officer. Her voices fade out into the familiar radio static. I'm wasting a lot of time. <laughs> uh-huh. Good. Oh, boy. Gottlieb, what do you want? Hello. You hear a man clearing his throat briskly and then an answer. He's carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. I was told to call Lazarus. People are worried about... Hang on, can we actually check why... Just the specifics of it. Suggested you call out Lazarus in order to sort out your health issues. You don't feel hopeful. Okay. Uh, people are worried. Oh. It's you. <laughs> yes, it's Firewalker here. Firewalker? Oh, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> don't breathe in the general direction of your fire feet. Uh, actually, wait. Fire feet? Do exactly that. Put yourself out of your misery. Take a deep diaphragmatic breath in and I feel like you're making fun of me I'm the most serious person at the station detective now do you have any current pressing medical problems I've lost my memory all of it with all the damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol I'm not surprised god I thought it was just alcohol there is no surprise in his voice, only careless superiority. So you're not surprised? Okay, anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Maybe you should be. Look on the bright side, you've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. I will. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you, or doesn't care. I think I've developed extreme photosensitivity. That's because you're hung over. Even the radio waves coming from your direction smell like liquor. Do you feel like your eyes are twitching too? You shouldn't lie to a doctor, yes. That's the tiny vessels pulsating from high blood pressure, stupid officer. You might be sustaining permanent damage to your vision as we speak. Oh, good. Not much I can do about it. I'm not an eye doctor. What kind of doctor are you? The busy kind. It's not life threatening, just annoying for you. I've got more important things to do here. I may have had a heart attack. And you survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Yeah, just. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Officers your age have currently trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. That is not comforting. Accept it. The body is an object, and objects break down. Oh. No. Do what good you can with yours, before the rest goes to- I need to take better care of my body, IRL. <laughs> just made me feel that. Is there, any, is there anything you can do for me? You want me to do blood work for you again? Tell you just how bad things really are across the board? You want another rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? Yes, give me the truth. You want the real, honest-to-God truth? Stop drinking, eat magnesium and vitamin D. Our station is not our retirement home. We don't have the funds to deal with rock stars past their prime. I am just entering my prime and you'll see. 
I am a super cop. I am a celebrity super cop. I am basically French Lei Long. And no, I don't want to hear a political commentary on the topic. In fact, I got work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyelids shut with cyanoacrylate. Jesus Christ. It looks like Mac Torsen. What a smart guy. It's not fucking cryo latte. Uh -huh. It's super glue, Doc. Why can't we laugh at him? I want to laugh at him. I guess that's it for now. Mm -hmm. The phone clicks. Suddenly you hear the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? Didn't Garty give you Sylvie's number? Yes. Hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Cool. Received. Hold on, officer. Thank you. Good. Good. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. That's why I'm occupying myself. Just wait. Relax. Fine. Good. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Wonderful. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Hello, I'm going to be professional. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last days at work. Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You know my voice? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. Oh, cool. Good. You quit your job. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why, why not me? I, uh... Let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. Get away from whom? You know whom. No, I don't. You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. Please don't tell me it's me. Don't be paranoid. She's obviously talking about someone else, not you. You need to get away from me? I really don't want to talk about this. Let's just forget about this, okay? Okay. Uh, are you ever coming back to work? Maybe. I don't know. What? I just know I have to take some time off right now. Yeah, 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 whatever. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. Amazing. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone, or the one on the coast. We have two leads? It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Understandable, but why didn't you call? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. What does the Union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. What do you mean? You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. I see. Garbage. Garbage. Wait, Kim. Is she speaking the truth? Is the union the law around here? Oh, it was. Now I'm here. Legally, no. <clears throat> In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the dock workers' union. Mm hmm. A situation. Words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. Looks like there's a limit to my authority then. Mm hmm. So why didn't you call us? I. I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Fuck the others, not literally. Push her further. <laughs> Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. I'm not a hard cop. I understand. You do? Oh. What else can I do for you? Next question. Yeah, go on. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. N You're a police officer. The law. No, 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 no. I'm speaking literally. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. I agree. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh, no, I haven't. 
Evans, sorry. Ah. Uh. Real police will never uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Kim doesn't have a uniform. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. Oh. There are officers who wear the signature Perseus black uniforms to the highest ranks in the RCM and end up buried in them as well. Others do it more casually. Looks like you're one of them. I want I want a cool uniform, but have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun today. <laughs> she sounds beyond exacerbated. I showed you my gun. When did that happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Oh god, never make suicide jokes. Hmm, I remember this. <laughs> oh no. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, cause these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. <laughs> Very nice visuals there. So I wasn't a comedian then, good to know. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding <laughs> while you were screaming, spit flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some in his food. I don't think he touched it after. Uh, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Uh, why would I do that? This place is great. There is silence on the other end of the line. Okay, but what happened to it? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like, Big bugs cannot lie. <laughs> guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. Guns can buy money, it's just not legal. It almost looked like you pawned it. But believe me, I did not ask. I don't blame you. Have you seen my... Actually, let's have a look at this real quick. That's... Puff, puff, that's pushing up a bit. I have experience points. Okay. Okay. Have you seen my really cool policeman uniform? Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. Oh. The disco thing. Oh, okay. I think I got everything I need. Thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Wait, why does she seem angry with you? I seem to have a good chance at this. Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the whirling in rags. When she was still working. I mean, I think I could hazard a guess, but let's find out for sure. You're mad at me, right? What did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad. It's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skewer thing happened. It just made me want to quit. Skewer thing? The stuffed bird. The great skewer. You threw it against the wall while screaming, Fuck that bird. <laughs> and laughing like a maniac. Oh, I had a feeling I had something to do with that. Oh. <laughs> Fuck that bird. It's garbage. Hot garbage. I must have been having um, apocalypse bird flashbacks. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. That's about right. Yep. Fucking punishing bird. Bitch bird got what was coming to her. <laughs> uh, sounds like me. Didn't seem like you had fun doing it though. Probably not. So I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. Oh boy. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. Oh boy. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. That's gonna be me soon. You. She pauses. Go on, I wanna know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Oh, I mean, I did destroy a bird. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I I hate it now. Understandable. But which song was that? Was it the sad banger? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. The hell with that song. Uh... Then there was your room. Your project. Oh god. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. Oh no. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. Oh god. I had no idea what you meant. 
and I don't want to know. No. And then you scream something about how you're actually a real cool guy, and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco, too. That sounds like I'm from Jamrock, then. We may have discovered where my home is. I'm sorry. And then I had to deal with your toilet. Oh. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I hope it was just police documents. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Yeah, I did do that. The police documents? I... Oh. The ones I had to rent out of your toilet. Uh, what happened to them? I... Damn it. I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Resentment gives way to concern in her voice. Especially when there's a hurricane loose. It's your fault for losing them. Not mine. Oh, it's totally my fault. I would not accuse you. Something in you wants to immediately forget about this. As if there was a reason you threw them away. Alright, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. You're the worst tavern wench I've ever seen. I am truly sorry. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. So what else did I sing? I'm looking for a song. I've got it stuck in my brain, and I really need to figure this out. All, all sorts of things. From disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. Yeah, was I singing the smallest church in St. Science? Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. The later it got, the more that one came on. Uh-huh. Interesting. You still have to find the copy, though, before you can blast it. Before I can blast it. Right, thank you for everything. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? I really hope you haven't been listening to these. Uh, I've done all of that. Uh, what's the saved button? As always, it's DJ Mesh <laughs> and Felicio, and you're listening to Three Freaks FM, <laughs> bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. <laughs> the most vulgar. Right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns <laughs> off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says. <gasps> Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted the prime land, right? Come on, man. Don't be ashamed of your music taste. He's still avoiding your gaze, and his ears glow red. <laughs> Speed Freaks FM, huh? Oh, uh, is that what it was called? <laughs> it's trying hard to act surprised. You don't want to get into this. No problem. Nothing to get into, really. But sure, uh, let's focus on the important yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, the important things. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect? I'm done for now. Thank you. Let's get the toolbox. The metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. I'd expect nothing less. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. I've worked with people who are protective of their tools. It's hard to get things done, but I understand why they're protective. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. I mean, I don't need these things right now. I could always come back and get them. Surely. It's just going to stay here. There's no point just lugging stuff around. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. I feel like Kim would appreciate it if I only grabbed tools when it was actually necessary rather than just whenever I felt like it. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch. And the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. What about the fuel heater gauge? As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. Heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Okay. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. I mean, understandable. Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. I mean, I am still technically drunk. Okay. We spent a long time with this thing. Um, can I use the headlamps to check my, um, my, my, my badge? I guess not. Okay, that's fine. There's a guy over there. There's things down here. I should check that body, but there's just so much to look at. Oh, I can't get to it. 
Some great tectonic force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. This is a bench. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Okay. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Makes sense. Thank you. What is this? You have to tell this me. This Postle Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Good mail delivery box. Good. Very good. The box seems happy. Good. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. I feel you, mail collection box. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankful even. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. Excellent. There is so much to fucking look at. Jesus Christ. There's a guy down here we should probably speak to. Look, let's go look at the body, okay? I feel like I should really... I've really put that off. Let's go have a look at the body. That's probably quite important. There's a child. Is that a child? It looks like a child. I hate children. Wow, he's fucking dead. Are you throwing stuff at that? I'm gonna look at this first. The re letter R wears a crown on the ribbon below, a light above, descending. I've done a variety of things. Keep searching for the cooler despite lacking any obvious leads. This might take some time. I asked for additional funds and they denied me. Hopefully I'll find my badge. I need to find my gun. Okay, good. Maybe the kid has my gun. Maybe I should beat him up until he gives me my gun. Hello. Kuno's got this. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness. Like a gremlin. He's a fucking gremlin. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno. Hey kid, a word. Uh, moment of your time, please. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. The fuck do you mean shit's coming up strong? What does that mean? Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Well, obviously. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! I'm gonna punch this kid. They're annoying me already. Kuno's riding it, see? He's wiped sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno! He should throw the rake at him, Kuno! You probably can't throw it very well with those tiny arms. The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. How the fuck do you not know what a rake is? Kim, what do we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. Uh. The language these kids are using. Pure, unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. Oh, brilliant. Are you kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? It's a pretty simple question, dumbass. He's calling us Kuno. Oh. He's that's not what siblings means, but it doesn't surprise me that that's what it means around here. <laughs> Fuck no. Kuno doesn't buy that shit. Fucking entrapment shit. Surprisingly intelligent response, I gotta be honest. I have questions. All right. Entertain the Kuno. Huh? Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. All right, I got these gloves. They're pretty nice. What do you know about the body? Shitload pig. What's your question? What do you know about it? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Kim, help me out here. I hate kids. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, <laughs> I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. Okay. The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Okay. Well, I'm sure this will be lucrative, and so much information will come from this, so we should get started. Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck imp. Uh-huh. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. Okay, probably get a disease from that, but fine. Do you know how it got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. 
Kuno wasn't regional. Okay, where would where was Kuno then? I don't know. Some fucking. He looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk or, or I don't know, some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. So you were so off your fucking head, you moved to Cyberpunk 2077. Where is that, by the way? I might be able to get a gun. Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. Ugh. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. I don't want to ask if you saw anything. Have you seen anyone suspicious other than when you last looked in a mirror? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Fair comment. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. I'm going to punch that kid. I want to punch that kid. Looks like you're a faggoty now. Whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. Agreed, but it was worth asking. Uh, so about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Yeah. Fuck are you going to do? Get lost, f Jesus Christ. Uh, so the crime scene. You kids play here often? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Okay. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Great. Who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig. So you refer to yourself in the third person. The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person. And an asshole. He looks slightly confused, but proud he came up with that retort. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Uh-huh. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! Pig's got Kuno! Oh. Help! Rape! Ah. Interesting. Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Just answer the questions. Stop wasting my time. He's digging his dick out. <laughs> well then. Escalate, Kuno. His dick is out. You're afraid. Are you <laughs> are you providing a script? What's going on? Pigs in there, Kuno. Somebody, please. Challenging. Oh, that was not going to work. Don't punch him. It's a bad idea. Are you high right now? Help, Misters. Help. Ah. Uh. He's having the time of his life. Total ecstasy. Fuck the pig. Interesting. He's flashing Kuno. He's showing his genitals. If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late. Just really want to punch him. Oh, I cannot be retried. Oh, I really want to punch him. Fuck it. It's not going to work. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't shut him down. Your fat fist didn't meet its target. Instead, it pulled you down with it. This is going to be painful. Say nothing. Pigs trying not to cry. Kuno can't believe this shit. Can no one stop the Kuno? Oh, God. It's not like he's realized he's got superpowers. Pig, Kuno thought you had this. What happened? Kuno can do anything now. He's writhing with joy like the power you gave him is too much to take. The whole charade was about to establish its dominance over you. It's safe to say he has succeeded. Yeah, in a major way. Fucked your shoulder, fucked your knee, fucked your fat body up. Yeah, I deserve this. Yeah, you deserve this. Trying to show your dick to Kuno. Kuno was scared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bow out with some dignity. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, what a fucking episode. Jesus Christ. I knew it was a bad idea. I just didn't know how bad an idea it was. Kuno beat the shit out of the popo. <laughs> beat your fucking knee off. I mean, I just missed, but okay. I told you not to tempt such forces. The annoyance is directed at you, not the gremlins. Now, how about we go and do something worth the public's time? Yeah, that's a good idea. I let myself get drawn in. Shouldn't have... What is this? What is this? There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. Ah, see if we can get an exact count? Maybe yeah. 12. No, 8 pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. 8 pairs of boots. 
This so is eight people, sixteen feet. Go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number forty six. Good. Two. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number forty five. I'm not going to remember all this. Three. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number forty three. I mean, they're all going to be steel toe capped if they're workmen. Four. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. No steel reinforced toe on that? Which is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Okay, count more. Five. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Okay. Six. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. So perhaps someone who isn't a workman? Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gate is undeveloped. I'm pretty good at this, aren't I? You're not bad. <laughs> it's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it. And the tracks burn in the middle of it. In a strange, beautiful way. Let's count the rest. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Am I been the person carrying the body? Eight. And yet another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Interesting. How many? 400 million. <laughs> no, eight. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. Same guys were going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Oh yeah, that did see it. anything out of the ordinary? Well, there's a light step there, number 41 shoe. A woman or a kid? Could be a kid, could be a woman. I don't know, I don't think there's any way to be sure. Okay, how do you know? He knows it's hard to discern sex from a person's gait. I don't. Understood. Anything else? <laughs> I straight up don't. A heavy one. 200, 200 kilograms. 200? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. That would make sense. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. One of them was carrying him over. Possibly, yes. So an aberration, one soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the odd soul. The odd soul. Do you have any ideas? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? Could be a drummer. He regrets it the moment he says it. Just nod. Because it could be. I don't know why I said that. We are not looking for a drummer. We are looking for a group of dock workers. Yes, but most musicians don't do music as their day job. You know, a dock worker could have aspirations to be a musician or play music as a hobby, so a dock worker could be a drummer. Something worth considering. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out their right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Yeah, that's a good thought. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. Mm -hmm. How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. That makes sense. It is not impossible. Ah, but how do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashoi. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Right. Correct again. Yeah. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. I mean, the body has been here seven days. So what do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Logical. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Certainly seems that way, but that's not sexy enough. Indeed. 
They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Well, we've been through all of it. Okay, well that's something. What about the tree itself? Kid's ladder is rickety but still climbable. Someone is trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. That's great. What about the body? Let's have a look at the body. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. I suppose that's what happens when you leave a body for seven days. You seem to be holding your breath. Mm hmm Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Well, I'm not going to try that endurance test. What is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. Yeah. It took it to throw up, officer. No one is judging. I might. Keeps me healthy. He's about to blow. Cock's going to blow, Kuno. Ah, uh, turn away. I'm not going to be able to do that. It's a 3% chance, for Christ's sake. There's a box over here. It's in the box. Money. And magnesium, which I do need. Um, uh, after I humiliated myself. The winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Fascinating, truly. Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. Hang on, I want to check the other thing. A lad of kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. So they probably didn't climb up there. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Sure, it's the place's trash can. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Probably. So what do you think could be in there, Kim? Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence, too. Seems like a reasonable assumption. Mm -hmm. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or? Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. We'll ask him first. It'd be better to just fucking open it rather than break in, but failing that... Uh, pry bar. Failing that, it will be pry bar. Failing that, pry bar time. What is this? Can't go in there. What is this? An old call box Whoa. with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Interesting. An off-key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Ah. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Kuno, please stop calling here. Grown-ups don't have time for your stupid games. Ah, <laughs> this is the police. There's a spot of static that overrides her words. But the doorbell is broken, and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore. So I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Thanks. Understandable. Okay. You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. You made that sound incredibly creepy. What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. Ah, uh, it must be a conspiracy. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. Okay. You ring the doorbell, but nothing happens. What about clothes? You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. No one answers the call. What about the taxi? Looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. That was that little fucker Kuno. You hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver but isn't saying anything. Hello, Slipstream, what the fuck are you? Yes, hello, this is Tricentennial Electric. This is a woman's voice, crackling and fragile through the static. Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique. 
as if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. I thought it was calling Slipstream. Oh my god. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's you. Oh my god. I didn't think I would hear your voice anymore. Oh boy, here we go. No. Something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Are you talking to me? Do we know each other? Michelle, just please. She stops and you can hear her breathe heavily, her breath distorted by ancient static. Uh... Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. She sounds like she's shaking. I thought you didn't, yeah. Uh... Hold on, what's going on? Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. Uh huh. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. Okay. It's so nice. Congratulations. It's so nice to be able to finally meet again. I may be poking a. Uh, live wire here, but forget about what. She sounds like she's about to cry. Hello? She doesn't answer. You still there? Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. What happened? Another seagull passes by. It's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. Interesting. I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. Okay, goodbye. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Apparently, let's give it a try. No. No. Nope. Hold on. The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. Consider volitions in the future. Okay. Fortress accident SCA. Silence. No one's home. At fortress accident. What a name. Revishol Ice City. Silence. No one answers the doorbell. Brilliant. Main hall building B whirling in rags. Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to talk to you. Understandable. East Delta Pinball? Silence. No one answers your call. Empty card? This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Hmm. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. Okay. Well, that was a whole thing. More than more and less than I was expecting, to be honest. Trash can? There are bottles inside. You could pick them up if you had a bag. Well, I don't. So why would you tempt me with such things? Whoa. Hello. What's all this? The book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. Flames! Book about pate. This is, you don't really get this book, it doesn't seem very important. Book about Wadero culture? It promotes freedom and roaming upstream. Okay. A book about the future, the government reads your mind using radio technology. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Hello, you. I. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. What kind of a store is it kind of for some books? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Ah, I can dictate my biography. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses. <laughs> What's a book? That is a book. <laughs> they have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. I appreciate the fact that she has told me that straight. What's a postcard? A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. Okay. She is unfazed by your questions. She would consider it impolite to point out any perceived weirdness. Very kind of her. What's a board game? I only play video games. Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. Interesting, thank you. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? 
Can I ask more questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Oh, this is going to get interesting. What's your name? Even though I do know. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. That's very important, yes. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling. But she's cold. You're cold! Can I help? Kind of you to offer, sir. She doesn't know what else to say. What could you do to help her anyway? I, sh I could have a word with the owner, maybe? Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Well, that's good, but we should keep an eye out for, like, I don't know, a coat or something. She has a coat, but I don't know, a hat. A hat might help. Shouldn't you be at school? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. What is school, anyway? School? Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street, and the people there run it. They say it's a charity. School is stupid. Lucky to not be there. Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. Ah, I've never heard of such a thing. How's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. Peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed? Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed, you say? A paranormal investigation? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Bankrupt? Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. This sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. <laughs> the lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. Yes. Please do look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games you asked about are also there, sir. Ah, what do you know about the other failed businesses? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. So how does this curse, sir, manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. Come on. Uh, <laughs> anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Mm-hmm. Enough about the curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. And it looks at you, your shaved prickly chin. It direct, distinctly contrasts with the oily mutton chops that surround it. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Wait, not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Uh... It's that bad. Crime is what we were solving before this conversation began. <laughs> Why would anyone want to read about crime? It's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things. And it's kind of like a puzzle, where you can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. Well, what does a cop look like, then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover on which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. It's not your body that's important anyway. It's your, your head and mine is fantastic. Head? Yes. Yeah. No, it's your soul. Your blue soul. Soul. That Mullen guy looks like a Hampleman. Who could respect that face? It's not even drawn correctly. He lacks soul. Um, I'm not sure I understand. A policeman's got to have the right stuff and ingrained sense of the law. No one would follow a weakling like Mullen. If you say so, sir. <laughs> He's just a fictional character. He's no match for your soul. She smiles mischievously. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. 
Like in the books. The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval. I did some good police work. I also tried to punch out a child. So I kind of teeter backwards and forwards, you know. So what is romance? I don't want to ask a child that. Oh, wow. I was trying to do something. Saw she's cold, afraid of the curse. Maybe if I talk more, I could get more points on this. What is romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. She smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. Ah, uh, not exclusively. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. Ah, it seems a tad uneven. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. What about when both men are bad? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. This game is a story that has mostly been a choice between bad and bad. <laughs> Things have gone very poorly. What if it's written really well? Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. That would be a solid move. What about when everyone's poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Yeah, but real things are more interesting. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. Well, I guess that has its value. What about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. Maybe. I'm not going to pin my problems on this child. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she can help out. That's Anything else you're curious about? That's enough romance for me. I had other questions. Maybe some about other books? Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold reddened cheek, then continues. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. They want to know more, they want to try and find their way there. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those books doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. And its expression remains ever so helpful. But she doesn't say anything. I mean, I'm not actually in intending to go in on this. She's a little child and she should be allowed to be idealistic. I had nothing else to say. Okay. <laughs> Poor girl. Uh, you can stop calling me sir, I am but a working man. No, sir, I can't. It would be too tiring to refrain from it. It's already tiring enough to remember to say it all the time. It's nice of you to say I could stop, though. I get you. I, for example, can't stop making this face. That's a friendly enough face, most of the time. That's a nice thing to say. I'm going to deduce something now. The yes. girl keeps her hands folded hidden. Why is that? Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? She looks wary. She knows where this is going. Hey, you don't need to be worried. I'm here to help. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. What upsetting realization is this going to provide? The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. Does that imply he now has a little interest, or that he has little interest and does not really care? A facade of true professionalism. He is far more intrigued by the situation than his poise reveals. Ah, it's okay. She brings out her reddened hands, her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. You bite your nails! And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? There yeah, were, uh, it's super simple for a detective such as myself. Uh, there are a few other hints. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Ah, her eyes flash with defiance. She's not impressed. Bet I can figure out why, because that's probably an empathy thing, and I'm somewhat good at that. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. You're uptight because of your mother and the pressure she's putting on you. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. 
Either way, another ace deduction by the number one detective in town. It was okay, sir. She's still got a rebellious streak. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You think, you think so? You do, do, do something about me. You're quite sober. She snaps back quickly. <laughs> the lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. I have to respect his composure. It's incredibly strong. How do you know I'm not usually? Because you usually aren't. I'm going to presume you've probably seen me drunk. And I'm having a grand time. I sure hope you are, sir. She rubs her red nose. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar, somehow. What are you missing here? Why does this feel familiar? Come on. Because yes. Because we know each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. Oh. She knows me. Hang on, so you know me. We've met before. Yes, I stand in this spot all the time. He sways back and forth on her feet. You've been running around all week without your shirt on, sir. Bah! Telling people about being a star or something. I don't really understand who those stars are. It's me. I'm the star. Did I ever talk to you? Of course. You've stopped by a few times. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. Oh, thanks. I'm trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. That's good. You shouldn't talk to children while having party eyes. It's a bad influence. Party eyes. Yes, of course. That makes sense. Yeah, I bet it does. I'm not surprised children have seen you running around with party eyes on, he thinks. Not at all. Yeah, party eyes. You know, like a cat in the dark. All big and wide-eyed. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a man. Or anyone, really. <laughs> The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That is what she meant. You were probably going into. I bet. Fuck yeah. You should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. Does that mean I've been partaking in narcotics? Oh, baby. That's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. So why didn't you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. Oh, thanks. I've learned something about myself today. I'm glad I could help you, sir. See you around, Annette. What a good child. The only good child in this game. So far, I guess. I'm not really, my, I'm not really expecting much. Ah, volition. There we go. Let's give that a try one more time before we end for today, because it's been over three hours, and this is quite slow-paced. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. All right, give this a try. Whatever she ah. says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and... And dashingly handsome. All right. Maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drunk so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. Oblivion is the ace in my corner. What a fantastic game. Call her again. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. Have you come to place an order? Ah, uh, it's me again. I wanted to talk to you. My God. Oh, here we go. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax. Distance yourself from it. Okay. I just want to explain myself. It's you. It's you. My God. But you heard it a little bit ago. Wait, is she... Are you repeating your words? Michelle, just please. Huh. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've 
Do you think it's funny, deceiving a police officer? The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Is it over? Can we talk now? Ever since oh, God. Keep listening. It's so nice. It's and then... It hits you. You're a recording. Yeah, I got this a while ago. <laughs> she tries again not to cry and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Ah. Huh. Real or not, your mirror neurons react. It feels painful to be listening to this. Why does it feel like it's my fault? Her sound melts into the static from a long distance phone call. From time to time, you can hear people talking in the distance, but can't make out any words. Uh -huh. This is where you hung up the call the last time, but the recording is still going. Keep listening. The phone rings in the office with an old fashioned chime and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. Is anyone there? No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious and total somehow, crawling inside your head. Her words are too cold to comprehend. Ah. She smells of sodium lights and rain streaks on car windows. Eyes like pilot lights watch your shape in dark hallways, guttering. Interesting. So... Strange alien thought pattern ends. The lieutenant cuts in, inspecting the intercom. It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. Something weird just happens to me. Don't take this the wrong way, but during our short stint working together, Something weird is almost always happening to you. What do you mean by that? That is true. Excuse me, why is everyone against me? I had an experience. Things happened. I've nearly confirmed Hobo Cop, so that's good. All right, well, I'm going to leave this here, ladies and gentlemen. That is a fascinating experience, and this is not the end, incidentally. I'm planning to do a full series on this. Very interesting. Um, yeah, uh, a lot, a lot there, and, 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 like, I feel like my mentality almost changed over time, I don't know. It's been quite an experience, I guess I do want to go back to being a superstar cop, but a lot of the time, some of the conversations have been so deep and interesting, I found it necessary to actually approach it seriously rather than continuing to fuck around. I guess it's just how I approach these kinds of games, but very interesting. I don't know how well this would have done as a... Uh, as a video, I guess, because it felt like a lot of the time I was just sort of going along with what was happening and reacting to it and not really talking about it much, but really good. I'd like to keep going. Uh, your input will be invaluable. Try and avoid spoilers if you can, because, you know, there's a lot going on in this game. There's obviously probably quite a lot to spoil, but be interested to hear your thoughts on this and everything. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Adash Sanjeev, Alkir, Honeydew Corporation, Sweet Baby Red, MBA, The Old Man River, Lord Scullington, Jessikitty, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Leper Lullaby, K Bub, Magical, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Sir World, Jumping with Joy, Warmasoku, SCP 106A, Namad, and Kenny C800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you all so much for watching. It's been quite an experience, to be honest. Oh, Aranye is pronounced Aranye. Revachol is pronounced Revachol, and Klausye is pronounced Klausye. Okay. Yeah, Klaus. Klausye? Klausye? I don't know. W yeah, wow. An experience thus far, and I'm quite into it, to be honest. I'm almost definitely probably going to keep this going. Time passes when picking new dialogue options. Read books to pass time quicker. Tools are context sensitive. Equip them before use. Okay, yeah, sorry, no, I was, I've immediately just went off of the train of thought of ending the video because there's more information. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. 
I have no idea if there's a right or wrong way to play this game, so I'm not worrying about it too much and just kind of doing it as I do and doing things as I would want to do, I suppose. I don't know. Having fun, though. I hope you're enjoying it, too. Whatever happens next time, and maybe we'll actually make some progress on this case, because we haven't really done that much. It is one o'clock now. We're gone one o'clock, so we can go into the kitchen and maybe there's something there. But whatever happens next time, hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye.